Hey folks, it's mid-April in Vermont, and you know what that means. It's time for some boot tossing. Now the goal here is to measure, uh, to, to hit that target over there, which is a measure 12 meters away from the boot plate here. And I'm going to look at a couple strategies for hitting that target. First of all, I might want to try throwing that boot straight at the target and see how I do. That wasn't so good. Didn't go as far as I hoped it would. But I threw it pretty fast. I'm thinking maybe the distance that I can get with this boot is going to depend upon the angle that I throw it at. And if I increase that angle, I should get it to go farther. Also, the faster I throw it, I think the farther it'll go. But I'm already throwing it about as fast as I can. So I'm going to try to maximize this angle part, make the angle as steep as it can be, about 90 degrees, and see if I can hit the target. Well, that wasn't so good either. So maybe there's something right between like zero degrees and 90 degrees that would be great. Let's try. Boy, I need a lot more practice. Anyway, there's some math behind all this. Let's go back and take a look at it. So you might remember from a project we did some time ago that when you throw something like a ball through the air, it follows a path that's a parabola. And in physics, um, there's a way to calculate or predict how far away a ball will go based on the speed that you throw it at or the angle of elevation that you throw it at. And it works just as well when you're throwing boots too. When you throw a boot, it follows a path that looks like a perfect parabola. And the equation that physicists come up with for predicting that distance is called the range equation. That's the distance, d, that you're able to throw a boot based on the angle that you throw it at and the velocity that you throw it at, the speed you throw it at. And the distance that you get in that case is d equals the square of the velocity times the sine of two times the throwing angle divided by g. And g is a special constant used in physics that's the strength of gravity or the acceleration due to gravity. And on the surface of the Earth, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, in our particular situation, the distance that we're dealing with is the regulation distance for boot tossing, which happens to be 12 meters. And I think the fastest that I can throw a boot, and I've measured this, is about 16 meters per second. Now here's a question. Suppose it's comfortable for me to throw at an angle of uh, 30 degrees, let's say. So the question is, if I set my angle of throwing at 30 degrees, and I know that my distance that I want to throw the boot to is 12 meters, what's the thing that I don't know? Well, looking at this equation, if g is a constant, the distance is a regulation distance, uh, the angle is known. The only thing I don't know is like what velocity should I throw it at. So what we want to do here is, given this information, let's figure out how fast I need to throw the boot at to hit the target, throwing it at an angle of 30 degrees. OK, let's try that out. So if I go back to my blue pen, um, I'm going to take this range equation, and what I want to do is solve for v squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the equation. And to solve for v, I need to multiply both sides by g. I'll cancel that. And then I have gd equals v squared sine 2 theta. Next thing I want to do is divide both sides by sine of 2 theta. And that cancels that. And then finally, to get at the velocity, I need to take the square root of both sides. So that gives me v equals the square root of g times d over sine of 2 theta. So I want to go and calculate that. Uh, I better use my calculator. So let me rewrite this with the numbers that I'm going to use. It's so a square root of g, which is 9.81 
meters per second squared times the distance, which is the regulation boot tossing distance, that's 12 meters, and divided by the sine of 2 theta, uh, which is, well, sine of uh, theta is 30 degrees. Sine of 2 theta would be 60 degrees. So the sine of 60 degrees, if you look that up in your unit circle, that's going to be root 3 over 2, right? So what I'm going to do is go to my calculator and um, evaluate that. So let me pause for a moment. Okay, I went and uh, went to my calculator and, and typed all this in, and I got a velocity of 11.7 meters per second. Cool. And that's good because I figured out that the maximum speed that I can throw at is 16 meters per second. And if I'm throwing at an angle of 30 degrees, I only need to throw at a speed of 11.7 meters per second. OK, so that's uh, a piece of work that I just did to figure something out using the range equation and a situation where I want to hit a target. And I just need to know how fast to throw the boot. I want to write this up somehow and present it to somebody. Now, I could show them this video, but you know it's kind of a mess. I could write this up in a Google Doc. Google Docs are really good at presenting things like equations. They got a nice equation editor, and if you're fast, you can you can do that pretty easily. But there's no way of doing the calculation in there. I still have to go offline and do the calculation and type the number in, just like I did here. Now, one thing you can do that does calculations in the document is use a Google Sheet. So Google Sheet does calculations, and it would be pretty straightforward to do this calculation in Google Sheets. But it's really hard to show people the math that I'm doing because Google Sheets doesn't have an equation editor and it can't in any way show this equation that I'm trying to evaluate. It can just do the evaluation and give me the number. Plus, if I want to describe what I'm doing with some nice text, Google Sheets is not a great um, tool for doing that. So to present this, I want to actually use something you've probably never used before called Google Colab. So next, I'm going to go to Google Colab and show you how you do this. All right, so now I wanted to go into Google Colab to finish our write-up. So I'm going to go to my web browser and type colab.research.google.com. And that should bring up this little dialog that you can use to pick a file and various other things. We're just going to go down to the lower right corner and say new notebook. So a Google Colab notebook is a place where you can write text, equations, and do computations. So in a, in a little bit of a sense, it's like Google Docs. If I go to the upper left-hand corner here, I can change the name of my file. And I want to call it my boot tossing write-up. I'll leave the .ipymb there. And right away, I've got a little window here that I can type in code. And I actually don't want to start with code. I want to, if I hover above that, I can add a code or a text cell above it. I want to create a text cell. So if I double click on that cell, now I have a little text editor. And all I just do in here is type some text. Now, at the beginning of my document, I'd like to have a title. So in this editor, you create a title by typing a hashtag space and then the title of your document. And this is different from the name of the file. This is just a, a title to introduce my work. Um, Exploration of boot tossing physics, I think sounds good. I press enter and I go to a new line. So as you can see on the right hand side, I've got uh, a nicely formatted title for my, my write up. Um, I'll write a few words here. I was experimenting with tossing my boots and want to explore the physics behind that process the governing equation for parabolic trajectories is as follows. OK, now um, if I go to a new line, and so you can see as I'm typing this text on the left, I'm getting a, um, the same thing appearing on the right. This is what it looks like in its final formatted um, form. Now, to create an equation, if I want to create an equation sort of block in the middle of my document, I would type a asterisk, sorry, a dollar sign, dollar sign. And then I type 
the equation in something known as latex or LaTeX or LaTeX. It's spelled like L-A-T-E-X, -E and I like to call it LaTeX because that's what it spells. And it's a type of programming language for writing mathematics, and it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, in this document, you say that you're going to start typing LaTeX by doing the, either a double dollar sign or a, a single dollar sign. I'm going to use a double dollar sign because that creates an equation in the middle of my page. Um, and then I type in LaTeX commands. Now, the equation, and you might re remember this from what I was doing on the, in, in my handwriting before, is distance equals D equals, and then there's a fraction. And to type a fraction in LaTeX, you use the backslash key. That's a slash that's leaning to the left, and the word F-R-A-C, which is the beginning of the word fraction. And every fraction has a numerator, which you put inside a pair of double brackets, curly braces like this, and a denominator that goes inside another pair of curly braces like that. So you type your numerator piece in there and your denominator piece there. So the numerator in this equation is v squared, so v, and to get an exponent, you type the up caret, up arrow, two, so v squared, and then sine, put a space in here, and then the sign also is a special word in LaTeX, so you use the back slash S-I-N. And then I can use a left parenthesis. Um, and inside the parentheses was two theta. And to get a theta character in LaTeX, you use the backslash again and type the word theta. And I'll put my closing parenthesis in. And that's my numerator. My denominator was just G. And then finally, in order to finish my equation, I have to use a pair of dollar signs. And once I type those dollar signs, you can see on the right-hand side of my screen, I have this very beautifully formatted equation, d equals v squared sine 2 theta over g. It's lovely. I'll hit enter again on the left to go to my next page. Now, um, what I'm trying to do here is solve the equation um, for the case where my um, distance is 12 meters and my angle of toss is 30 degrees. And um, what I did in handwriting was I saw that equation for V. I want to find out how fast I need to throw that boot at an angle of 30 degrees to achieve a distance of uh, 12 meters, which is the regulation distance for boot tossing. Um, so in this presentation, I'm just going to say, hey, here's the governing equation for parabolic trajectories. I am going to solve that equation. I'll type that. I am going to solve this equation for velocity, colon, enter. And now I'm going to do another equation. And I'm just going to type the new equation that I already worked out before on a piece of paper. I'm going to type that in latex. So in this case, velocity equals square root. And the square root symbol in latex is done again with this backslash character SQRT. Now, what goes in the square root goes in a pair of curly braces. So I follow the square root command with a pair of curly braces and go into the curly braces. And I can type what goes in the curly braces. Now, in this case, what goes in the curly braces is a fraction. So let me type that backslash FRAC and then another pair and another pair of curly braces for the numerator and the denominator of that fraction. Now, in the numerator of my fraction, I have G times D. So I'll just type G and D. And in the denominator, I have sine of 2 theta. So again, that's backslash S-I-N, parenthesis, 2, backslash theta, close parenthesis. And now if I go all the way to the right and type my double dollar signs, I should get my equation. So there I can see on the right-hand side, I have my nicely formatted equation that I've solved for velocity. Velocity equals the square root of GD over sine of 2 theta. Okay, now um, I could do this again and put the numbers in, but I think I'm just going to go and do the evaluation. So I'm going to type in my text from here. I will evaluate this equation. And um, for the case where the angle is 30 degrees and the distance is 12 meters. 
Okay. So this is like my my introduction to this. I was experimenting with tossing my boots. I want to explore the physics behind that process. The governing equation for parabolic trajectories is as follows, blah. I am going to solve this equation for velocity, blah. Okay. From here, I will evaluate this equation for the case where the angle is 30 degrees and the distance is 12 meters. So now I'm going to go down to my code block, which was already here by default when I started. And this code block is going to use a language called Python. And I'm going to lead you through some of that. In the beginning, I want to include in my Python code some mathematical functions that I'm going to need. And to do that, I use this statement from math import. And the functions I'm using are sine, S-I-N, um, the square root, S-Q-R-T, and uh, let's see, what else? Oh, pi. I think I might use pi. And um, I'm going to include another function called a sine, which is also known as the inverse sine function. OK. I'm going to put another space in here. Now, some of the constants that I'm working with, I've got the distance. So I'm going to type uh, the distance, distance, D-I-S-T, A-N-C-E equals 12. Put a few spaces in, hashtag, and I'm going to put a comment here. This is the distance to my target. And another constant that I want is g, which is 9.81. This is the acceleration due to gravity. And let's see, I have an angle. 30. This is my throwing angle. And in Python and in a lot of scientific programming, the trig functions sine or inverse sine work in radians. So before we use this angle, we need to convert it to radians. So I'm going to do that conversion here. I'm going to make a new variable called angle radians. And if you remember how to do this conversion, you take the angle in degrees and you multiply it by pi and divide by 180. So there's a little statement in Python for calculating the angle in radians, given the angle in degrees, which I defined above, and pi, which came from this import, and 180, which is how we you know, calculate radians. OK, so now I'm going to do all the math. I want to say the velocity equals, and now I'm just reading this equation that I typed above here, and I'm going to translate it into Python. So the function is square root, sqrt. Now, although it's the same thing that I used when I typed in LaTeX, I don't use a backslash here. Python just understands square root as it is. Parentheses, pair of parentheses, and inside the parentheses, I'm going to put this uh, gd over sine 2 theta. So that's going to be g. And in Python, you use the asterisk character for multiplication, so g times d. The forward slash, so when it leans to the right, is used for division. And then sin, which is imported above from math import sign, so sin. Another pair of parentheses, and inside that is going to be 2 times angle radians. So now I have a statement written in Python that's going to calculate this piece that's on the right-hand side, the square root piece. And it's going to assign the result of that calculation to the variable called velocity. And if I want that to actually display for me, I just, on the next line, type velocity. Now, there's my code. Let's try running it. To run it, I moved this upper left-hand corner of this code block where there's a little uh, triangle, a little play button, and I press play. Thanks for a little bit. And I got a name error. D is not defined. Uh, oh, that's right. That's a bug. I made an error. So the um, constant that I used here that I created was distance. And then in my code, I used D, which is what I had in my equation over here. But in my Python, I didn't use D. I used the word distance. So in my code, I'm going to change D to distance. And I'll run it again. And boom. It gave me an answer. 
So that's the velocity that's calculated given the angle of 30 degrees and the distance of 12 meters, and g is 9.81 meters per second squared. So I could follow that up with a little conclusion. So I'm going to hover my mouse at the bottom of this block and say plus text. I'm going to add a text block, and I'm going to write a conclusion. So I'm going to start with a hashtag conclusion and a new line. So here's my conclusion. Given the information above, on angle and distance, the velocity needed to hit the target is 11 point, I'll round that, 11.7 meters per second, period. OK. And uh, if I click outside that block, I now have a basically a document that describes what I'm doing. It includes the nicely formatted math. It has a code block that literally does the calculation in that mathematics and produces an answer. And then finally, I have a concluding block in text where I take that calculation result and write about it. Given the information above on angle and so forth, the velocity needed to hit the target is 11.7 meters per second. So that, in a nutshell, is how you do a very simple document in Google Colab.